Hi guys, my name is Karawa Sitsole. I'm a student from the University of the Adventist Rand and I am studying accounting science. So I just thought it would be nice to do a video to help um, accounting sci science students because we do computational maths. So I'm just going to be providing a summary of FM6 all the way to FM11 because there's a test coming up, right? Test five is coming up and we are writing on Monday. So I'll just be doing a video to focus on a few things that you need to know before you get into that exam room. And it includes knowing your withdrawals, knowing withdrawals made in perpetuity, growing annuities, Newton's method of calculating your interest rates, knowing any interest that is compounded continuously knowing what happens or what you have to do and how you deal with the situation when you take a loan but you miss payments or there was an interest rate change right so those are all the things we'll be dealing with today so let's get to it guys so basically you invest a particular amount of money in a bank right beforehand you invest let's say 50k Right, and you want to make withdrawals as time goes on. I'm talking of things like um, your retirement annuities. You invest something, and at some point in time, you retire and you have to withdraw a particular amount of money. So, you can make your withdrawals at a constant rate. For example, you decide that you will withdraw a thousand rand per month, every month, you withdraw, you withdraw a thousand rand withdraw a thousand rand so that is just your normal withdrawals right where you are withdrawing your money at a constant rate so the rate at which you are withdrawing the money is not changing it is remaining constant right so when you are making such withdrawals you may use your formulas or you can decide to use your calculator right and on the calculator you will use the cmpd function i will show you how to use it let's just look at how we are going to use our formula so on my formula i have the pt which are my payments right or my withdrawals and then i have my i which is my interest rate it always has to be your effective so whenever you are given a nominal one you have to convert it into your effective formula so my i should always match my n so remember that with withdrawals, there's a certain way that you are making the withdrawals. You can make the withdrawals monthly. You can make them quarterly. You can make them yearly. You can make them half yearly. So you should always match your period, the period in which your N is to the way your I is. So if the payments are being made monthly, you must match whatever I you are given to make it monthly. And how do you do that? You actually use the equivalence formula, which says 1 plus i n to the power of n is equal to 1 plus i m to the power of m. So let's just say you are given a monthly interest rate. So you have 1 plus 12% um, per annum, right? Or you are given i1, 12% per annum. So i1 once per year. So on my n, I put a 1. And I'm looking for i12 every month, right? So I'll have i12. On the other m, I'll put a 12. And then you will solve this and solve for I12, right? So let us do that, guys. So you will have 1 plus 12%, right? To the power of 1 divided by 12, right? Minus 1 times 100. So my I12 in this case is 0.94887%, right? And also you have your future value formula which is pt pt is still the same thing your withdrawals or your deposits one plus i to the power of n minus one same case your i must always match your n right so you cannot change the way your payments are made hence i say that you must match your i with your n rather than matching your n with your i right i know i wrote match n with i here it was just a mistake so it is supposed to be match your i with your n right so let's just fix that quickly Okay, so let us now look at how we can then use our financial calculator to simplify things for ourselves. 
So you will use the CMPD function on your financial calculator. I must say that this is not like our basic scientific calculator because some okay, actually the basic scientific calculator does not have the financial um, buttons. So this is a financial consultant calculator, second edition, FC 100V, right? So you will press the CMPD button and when you do that, you get N is equal to zero. Your I should be zero if like you are only starting to use it. Just make sure everything is like zero. So you will put your N, you'll put your I, put your PV, PMT, FV, etc. Right? So one thing you should also remember is that if you are solving for FV, make sure your PV is zero and put your PMT. And if like let's just say you have your P, V, P, M, T, and you're solving for N and you have your I, make sure that one of these values, one of the of the values between your P, V, and your P, M, T are negative and the other one is positive, right? Okay, so let us now look at what happens in a case where I am actually dealing with an increasing, um, increasing rate, right? Where I'm making my withdrawals, but I'm making my withdrawals at an increasing rate. For example, and that increasing rate has to be constant. So every month you are increasing your withdrawals by 10%, increasing your withdrawals by 10%, increasing your withdrawals by 10%, right? So let's just look at what happens then. So there is no magic button for our increasing withdrawals. So you have to use your formulas. These formulas will be provided at the back of your question paper. So you don't have to worry about that. Just need to make sure, remember those are withdrawals. I cannot change how I'm withdrawing my money. So my I should match my how my N is made and my R should also match how my N is made, right? So you will use these formulas. Just make sure you use them properly, right? Okay, guys, let us move on. So basically, this is just saying what I was saying that just make sure that your R and your I match your N. Right. So let us look at a case where you are making unlimited withdrawals. So let us just look at a case where you are making unlimited withdrawals. You do not know when you are going to die, right? No one knows when they are going to die. So you invest um, money as you as you work as you are working. So as you work and work and work every month, you put a particular amount of money in an annuity, and then when you retire. You want to get unlimited withdrawals until you die, right? The reason why we say we have unlimited withdrawals is because we do not know when you are going to stop taking the withdrawals, right? So when such withdrawals are made, we, they are said to be made in perpetuity. They are not endless. They are actually, en they are not endless, right? They are unendless. So the formula when the withdrawals are not increasing is PT over I. Where my PT is my is actually representing my withdrawals. And then your PV, when your withdrawals are growing, it is PT over 1 minus R, right? And they are in percentage, obviously, guys. And then we have what we call sinking funds. So basically, in a sinking fund, you want to buy a new car. I'm bringing it back to Earth, back to planet Earth. So I want to buy a car, right? But for me to buy that car, I need to save, right? So I will also sell my the car that I have currently as part payment for the new car that I will buy any years from now. So you will find sinking funds where you have a new machine or a new car that you want to buy. It will be paid in part payment by the old car that you have, right? And also buy the future value or the savings you will make to buy that car. However, you also now have to, to take into account that you have to maintain the existing car or the old car or the old machine, right? So just know that in such a case, you might be given the value of the machine, right? You might be given the value of the machine um, or you might be given the value of your current car, which will be called the old machine when you buy your new car, right? So you might be given the value of your current machine or your current car. And what you have to do is to now compound it using, depending on, like you need to compound it with interest to the years, to the year you're buying it. So if you're starting at T0, which is now, and you'll buy, you buy the car six years from now, 
then you need to compound the current car for six years, right? So find out how much it will actually be worth six years from now. As for the old machine, you actually have to depreciate the value of the current machine because remember that cars depreciate. So five years from now, the car that you have now won't be worth the same thing. It would have been depreciated. For those who do not understand what depreciation is, depreciation occurs when a car loses its value over time. As you use the car, it wears off, right? So that is what we call depreciating. The car is losing its value as time goes on. The car losing its value over time, right? So that's basically that with our sinking funds. We will definitely do examples um, in another video. For now, I just want us to continue. So your withdrawals are very easy, guys. You just need to make sure your I matches your R and N how N is made. So let us now go to loans, right? So all you need to know is that a loan is a particular amount of money that you are borrowed, right? So if you are borrowed an amount of money and you are given that money, it is only, right, it is only common sense to say that whatever amount of money you have is the money at present, right? It is the present value of the loan, the bank will put interest on that loan and that loan will then have to be repaid depending on the on the given agreement right so you should just know that a loan is represented by the present value formula so the loan is represented by the present value formula so there are a few things that you guys need to know how to calculate you need to know how to calculate your balance outstanding you should um, know how to calculate the interest portion of your loan to calculate the principal portion of your loan using both your calculator and using your formulas, right? So for the balance outstanding or any question that you will work, it, you will work with with loans, you need to make sure that you always solve the initial equation before anything happened and you make sure that it's under your CMPD so that when you press the right button to solve for your interest portion, your balance outstanding, that information is already stored in the calculator, right? So the button that we will use to solve the balance outstanding, the interest portion, and the principal value is actually the amortization button in your financial calculator. It is this button, the amortization button, right? So whenever you are asked to calculate a balance outstanding at a particular point, you always use the M. So if they ask you to calculate the balance outstanding at T7, you will calculate it at 0.7, right? So under your amortization, there's a part that says PM1, PM2. So if you are calculating balance outstanding at PM7, you'll put seven here and seven here, right? So the interest portion of the loan is always calculated before any interest rate change, right? So if you want the interest portion of the loan at T7, you will calculate the balance outstanding at T6 and multiply it by interest, right? As for the principal portion of the loan, it's always the payment minus the interest portion. So yeah, and then we have higher purchase, right? This is when your loan is actually charged at a simple interest rate and your PT is always equal to your FV divided by the number of payments you will make. So your FV is just your simple um, interest future value formula, which is, let's just write it, which is PV1 plus IN, right? So you will change the N to years when you are calculating the FV. If you made four quarters, then that means you will have one here, right? So if you made 12 monthly payments, that's equal to one year as well. So on the end, you will put one, right? So, yeah, man, that's just that with loans. And then we come on to final payments, right? So let me just pause the video. I'll finish the video up just now.